believe that this word today is going to be absolutely amazing. Mainly because out of all of the segments thus far in our timing series, this one right now is my personal favorite. Because I believe God is going to use this sermon, this particular installment in our timing series, to give us a spiritual awareness to be able to notice the timing. Notice the timing. Like, in other words, some things are too coincidental to be a coincidence. <laughs> notice the timing. Like, I need you to notice how warfare has increased ever since you made your mind up to be kingdom. You may not know what I'm talking about if you haven't made your mind up. If you're still, like, thinking about it, you don't know what I'm talking about. Like, I'm talking about the people who are for real, for real. Not for fake, for fake. But for real, for real. I'm talking about like you want to pray. You want to be holy. You want godliness. You want purity. There was a time in your life when you didn't want to. You had a have to heart. And if you're still there, that's okay because it starts as discipline before it ever becomes desire. Just keep staying in his face, then the discipline will transition into desire. But I'm talking about, have you noticed ever since you made your mind up to be kingdom, they came back? The comments, y'all don't want to talk to me. The family members, notice the timing. And then also on the flip side, I need you to notice how the warnings have increased when you try to be sneaky. <laughs> like the back of your neck get hot when I'm preaching. The conviction is tough when I'm preaching. That's because once you meet Jesus, you can never sin the same again. I need you to notice the timing. Somebody say notice the timing. Yeah, that's what I believe the Holy Spirit wants to do with this particular sermon. Help my people to notice when I'm moving. And help my people notice when I tell them to stop. Because certain instructions are time sensitive. Because your obedience is tied to your relevance. This is why the devil wants you to have delayed obedience. Because your obedience is tied to your relevance. And you could wait so long to obey that when you finally do obey what you were supposed to obey God in 2006 is not as relevant in 2023. So when I tell you to obey, obey because your obe obedience is tied to your relevance. So I'm excited about this particular word on today. And I believe God wants us to be able to get this revelation of time so that you can learn the value of a moment in that moment versus the value of a moment once it's a memory. Revelation was never designed to be given on your deathbed. Whatever God is telling you to do, do it now. Somebody say now. So, Father God, thank you so much for this moment. Thank you for allowing us to see a new day, a day that we never have saw before and a day that we will never see again. Thank you for allowing us to see a new month, the last month of this year. And God, far be it from us if we get caught up in the commercialization of this time of year, God, we recognize that it's not about what's under a tree, but who hung on the tree, which is you. So, God, help us to be focused on what it is that you're trying to say to the hearts of your children. I pray that this word will pierce the hearts of men and women so that we will no longer have delayed obedience, that we will no longer fall into the traps of the enemy, but God, we will have king discernment. And just like I asked in private, I also ask in public. Anoint me as your oracle, the soundtrack system of heaven, the PA system of heaven, because if you aren't seen, this is all vanity. We didn't come here to hear from a man. We came here to hear from you. So God, breathe on our encounter. Breathe on everybody who's watching this online and also in person. We're asking that you do it. In Jesus' name, and everybody who agrees that prayer, will just shout in the room, on the over, in the overflow, and online, amen. amen. So I want us to turn our Bibles to the Gospel of Mark. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verse 9 is where we're going to launch our reading. If you do not have a tangible Bible, we'll have it projected for you on the screen. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verse 9. If you're ready, would you shout, I'm ready. I'm ready. 
It says, it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And immediately coming up from the water, he saw the heavens parting and the spirit descending upon him like a dove. Then a voice came from heaven. You are my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. So we're seeing right here in this passage the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, all in this one particular moment. Immediately, the Spirit drove him into the wilderness. Notice, after the baptism, then the wilderness. So everybody who's signing up to get baptized in January, <laughs> this text might be giving you a snapshot of, of what's coming. Not the devil, but the Spirit led him into the wilderness. And he was there 40 days, tempted by Satan, and was with the wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. Now, after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, the time, somebody say time. time. The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand Repent. We need more preaching that starts with that. First sermon. Repent and believe in yourself. Know what the text says? Repent and get self-help. Know what the text says? Repent and believe in the gospel. Our verses of emphasis, our clauses of concern are really three segments in our foundational reading that I would like to bring to your attention and your awareness for just a few moments on this Sunday afternoon. The first verse I want us to look at again is verse number 11 where the text tells us a voice came from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Somebody say confirmation. One more time, it's prophetic for somebody. Say confirmation. confirmation. Okay, so before Jesus starts his ministry, before Jesus ever walks on water, before Jesus ever turns water into wine, before Jesus casts out a devil, before Jesus transitions from the season of obscurity into the season of exposure, we don't know what Jesus was doing from 12 to 30. The only thing the Bible lets us know is during that time, Jesus was growing in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and with man. In this time frame, before Jesus ever starts his ministry, he gets confirmation. Somebody say it one more time. Confirmation. confirmation. That's what you want before you sign the contract. That's what you want before you go on business with them. That's what you want before you say, I do to that man. That's what you want before you say, I do to that woman. That's what you want before you say, for better or for worse. That's what you want before you start that ministry. Well, pastor, I know God called me. I know I'm called to ministry. I'm not saying he didn't call you. But what I am saying is, um, why is it you can hear God call you to ministry, but you can't hear him call you out of sin? I know God called me to preach. Okay, but you can't hear him call you out of cloud nine hookah lounge. You can't hear him call you out the strip club. You can't hear him call you out of cursing people out and tarnishing your witness. You can't hear him calling you out of speaking nice in English, but um, I keep on saying I speak in tongues, but I keep on speaking mean in English and mean in Espanol. You can't hear him calling you out of chasing fast women and fast money. So what you want to do is you cool with having your body count at 20, but you want hers at zero. Can you hear when? Okay. <laughs> I'm not sorry. My generation requires real. <laughs> Confirmation. See, this is what I was trying to get us to understand in the Voices series. For part two, when I was speaking about, did you get confirmation? I was trying to get us to understand there's another level of confidence you have once you've been confirmed. 
You walk different once you're in a room knowing you've been confirmed to be there. You talk different knowing that you have been confirmed. Confirmation is tied to confidence. Maybe the reason your insecurity is so high is because you're doing things that you haven't been confirmed to do. You're asking God to confirm what the devil sent and you're confused why God is not blessing it. You need confirmation. The beauty of confirmation is no matter how bad it gets, come hell or high water, regardless if they're talking about me, I've been confirmed. People leaving, I've been confirmed. Pandemics, I've been confirmed. I see the storm, but I've been confirmed. I hear the wind too, but I've been confirmed. And once I've been confirmed to step outside the boat, I'm not tripping about the elements. I'm not tripping about what people say because I've been confirmed. God always endorses that which he has confirmed. God endorses that which he has confirmed, and God confirms that which he has endorsed. Can we talk? Nobody said nothing. Can we talk? Okay. This reveals a blind spot that Satan has been using to steal our time. Because God confirms what he has endorsed, and God endorses what he has confirmed. So the blind spot that Satan has been using on how to get us to waste time is he tries to get us to engage in unconfirmed fights and take unconfirmed offers. See, because unconfirmed fights are not fights that God is obligated to help you overcome because this fight doesn't advance the kingdom. This fight doesn't give me glory. This fight is due to your petty. This fight is due to your ratchet side. This fight is due because you knocking and bucking and ready to fight. This is this fight. So you will end up wasting time fighting fights that don't matter to your assignment, wasting time fighting fights that don't matter to your destiny, and you're praying God to help you, and God's like, that's not a confirmed fight. The enemy wants us to take unconfirmed offers because wrong offers put us in wrong places and wrong places cause for us to waste time time it's about time it's about time now I want you to consider two more verses and then we're gonna work verse 13 same book mark chapter 1 verse 13 and then we're gonna go to verse 15. Look at this. Verse 13, and he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and was with the wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him there. Then when we go to verse 15, Jesus says, the time is fulfilled. Y'all, you can't miss this. You can't miss this. Please don't miss this. If you don't remember anything else from this sermon, I want you to get this. I want you to get this so bad, we made a chart so that you can see it, okay? After salvation, this is how it works. The first step is confirmation. After confirmation, then there's preparation. Please, I need y'all to get this. Confirmation, I taught us this. What is confirmation? It is divine authorization. It's when God is showing you this is what you will have authority in in the earth because this is what I placed you in time to fulfill. So when you are confirmed in that area, you will have an authority with it. You're not flexing. You're not trying to get anybody to notice you. You just have a divine authority in what you have been confirmed to do. There's confirmation and then there's preparation. That's the longest part. See how quiet it is? That's the longest part. Preparation. That's where you experience discipleship and regeneration and sanctification and mind renewal. It's when God is like, okay, right now, I do understand you have a promised land address, but you currently have an Egypt appetite, okay? So I have to deal with your taste buds where you will stop liking those type of men. 
I have to deal with those taste buds where you will stop liking those type of women. I have to deal with those taste buds because, yes, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So I put you in a place where I can prepare you, and any time you're in preparation, Satan always brings temptation. This is derived right from this biblical narrative. Jesus get baptized. He's confirmed. The spirit leads him into a season to prepare himself. He's about to launch his earthly ministry. While he's preparing, Satan is tempting him. Now, this is the detriment. Most people never leave the temptation part. They never experience overcoming. Not because God hasn't given you the power to overcome. He told us. In the word, you are not just a conqueror, but you're more than a conqueror. By the blood of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit, you can overcome pornography. You can overcome same-sex attraction. You can overcome drunkenness. You can overcome your lust. You can overcome pride. I'm talking to somebody who feels defeated and feels discouraged like you can't get out of this. You serve this type of God. I don't care what you did. Just come home. You can overcome the addiction. You can overcome insecurity. You can overcome the trauma. Don't you dare believe the devil's lies. I was made like this. That might be true. This is why you're called to be born again. Born again. Overcome, overcome. Look, once you experience overcoming, that's when you walk into your appointed time. Are y'all getting this? It was after the baptism, after the wilderness, after the temptation, that Jesus then said, the time. (laughs) Y'all missed it. Jesus says, the time. Is fulfilled. What is Jesus saying? The point that has been set in human history, the time for the Messiah to come into the earth and teach his people how to be kingdom, the time for the healing to happen, the time for the lame to walk has happened, the time for devils to be cast out is now here, the time for me to build my church is now here, the time for me to be crucified, die, bury, resurrect with all power in my hand, have the keys to hell of death in my hand, that time is here. It's here, but first, I had to get confirmed. I had to be prepared. I had to have the enemy try me. That's all he did was try. I overcame him. So now the time is here, the appointed time. Somebody say time. Time. So I want us to really get this, y'all. Please, if I was a note taker, I would write this down. After confirmation, there's always attempted confiscation. Somebody hit you. After confirmation, there's always attempted confiscation. Notice the timing. Notice the timing. Before you leave here on today, somebody, you are getting confirmed right now. The enemy is going to attempt to confiscate that word that God has placed in your heart because he is one that tries to steal the seed that God is trying to plant in your heart. After confirmation, there is always confiscation. I want to confiscate your peace. I want to confiscate your joy. I want to confiscate your hope. I want to confiscate your vision. I want to confiscate your mental health. The devil is a liar. This is his method. He tries to take it. Notice the timing. Notice the timing. Notice the timing when you're the most depressed. Notice when you're the most discouraged. Notice when you're the most horny. Notice when you're the most distracted. Notice when you're the most worried. Who texts you? Who calls you? It's too much of a coincidence to be a coincidence. Because dark places make space for familiar voices. Talk, Holy Spirit. Dark places make space for familiar voices. And your flesh will always rage when you have allowed your past to be an option. Did y'all hear what I just said? Your flesh will always rage when you have allowed your past 
to be an option. Notice the timing. Notice the timing. Notice the timing. Can we go a little deeper? The weeds don't come first. The wheat does. Okay, let me show y'all Bible, okay, because y'all looking correct, right? Okay, Matthew chapter 13, verse 24. I don't know how I missed this. As many times as I preach from this text, I didn't see this until this week. Matthew chapter 13, verse 24, it says, Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field, but while everyone was sleeping, his enemy, his enemy, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. And I said, oh, Lord, I don't know how I missed this. The weeds are never planted first. The wheat is. You don't get the distraction first. You get the blessing first. So it's God moves, then Satan tricks. You never get the distraction first. You always get the blessing first. And I'm like, oh my God, this is, a, this, this is revelation for me. Because this means if I only see the distraction, but I don't see the blessing, the enemy has me so focused on the distraction that I'm missing the presence of the blessing. Because the weeds don't get planted first. The wheat get planted first. So anytime God blesses you, the enemy will try to distract you. And if there's anybody who feels like I'm not blessed, it's because, remember, time and attention are currency. Whatever you're paying attention to, that's where your focus is going. It's not that God isn't blessing you. It's that you're paying your time on the distraction. This is so profound. Yeah, it's just not, it's just been a hard year. Okay, distractions are never first. The blessings are first. I'm blessed because I have health and strength. I'm blessed because I'm sane in my membrane. I'm blessed because I'm saved, anointed, and appointed. I'm blessed because my name is written in the Lamb Book of Life. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. The location doesn't matter. The blessings on my life, I'm blessed. And I think right now we need to pause, pull over, park, put a quarter in the meter, and let's give God praise because we're blessed. See, some of us, it's hard for you because you're focused on the distraction. I'm trying to shift your focus to the blessing. You're saved. That's a blessing. You have Jesus. That's a blessing. You have life. That's a blessing. You have grace. That's a blessing. You have mercy. That's a blessing. You've been redeemed. That's a blessing. You've been sanctified. That's a blessing. The weeds are never planted first. The weeds are never planted first. The wheat is. Notice the timing. Notice the timing. Notice, why did the enemy plant after the farmer planted? To cause confusion. Because confusion is a time waster. Somebody, you're in a relationship right now, confused as you want to be. God, is this your will? Here's the answer. I'm not the author of confusion. It's not that deep. I'm waiting for a sign. I'm waiting for a revelation. I am not the author of confusion. So if this sister leaves you confused, brother, or if this man leaves you confused, that's your sign. I, I just need more evidence. Oh, you wanted them. Okay. You wanted them. God, show me a red flag. Okay, but how red is going to be, though? <laughs> Somebody say confirmation. confirmation. Okay. So now look. Luke chapter 4, verse 13. The exact same scenario, just from a different gospel writer. Luke chapter 4, verse 13. It says, Now when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him. Look at this, y'all. Until an opportune 
time. Now, remember last week we learned that devils and demons are aware of timing too. I didn't just leave them alone. I'm waiting for the opportune time. I need for us to be people who notice the timing because the devil does. I'm waiting for an opportune time. I'm trying to give y'all spiritual cheat codes this afternoon. Here's one. He always tempts the most when you're about to make an exit or you're about to enter. That's, that's like a free cheat code. I just threw that in here for free. The temptations are the greatest when you're about to enter into something or when you're about to exit something. He departed him for an opportune time. See, the power of a temptation or a trap is its ability to blend and the timing. If you're a hunter, what time does the doe come to the meadow? What time do the bucks come to the forest? What, what time is the bear going to come to the creek? The power and the effectiveness of a good temptation or a good trap is revealed in its ability to blend and the timing. I need to be at the right time and the right place. When are they most likely to lower their standard? Is it around cuffing season? When the wind is a little more brisk? That sound effect, though. <laughs> is that when he is a little more prone to compromise? Because I have tra traps for opportune times. When, when is he most likely to entertain that woman who is not his wife? When is she more likely to entertain that man who's not her husband? Is it after they got into an argument? Is it after they got so mad where he got into his car and he left? I'm going to make sure their co-worker is 30 tomorrow. I'm going to make sure that he's extra nice today because I have traps for opportune times. When is the time that they're most likely to hang and text that time waster that they're calling a friend? <laughs> You're calling them your girl. You're calling them your friend. But in the spirit realm, that's a time waster. Because they keep on bringing the side out of you that you no longer want to be. They keep on trying to resurrect parts of you that you're trying to keep in the grave. So the devil's like this. Okay, I'm going to send them somebody who has a shovel. Whatever they're trying to bury, let me send that ex back to see if he can dig up, dig up that old them. Let me have their mama just randomly text them. I haven't heard from mama in two years. Let me see if she could come back with the shovel. Let me see if uncle can text them to ruin their peace on today. I try to send people back with shovels to dig up the old you. Because I have traps. I'm trying to get us to get this. I have traps for opportune times. When is the time that they're most likely to watch pornography? Is it 10.30 at night? He had a hard day. He's trying to practice purity. This seems like the safe sin. I'm going to have that IG model DM him at 10.30 because that's the time that he's tired. Oh, no, it's not 10.30. It's 6 in the morning as soon as they wake up. Okay, bet. I'm going to have them DM at 4 a.m. because the first thing that they do in the a.m. is not seek the I am, but they first seek the phone. So when they turn the phone on, the first thing that they see, preach Holy Spirit. He departed for an opportune time. He's waiting. See, the devil has patience. He'll have something hit your life 14. It won't bother to you 26. He will monitor that thing. I'm going to wait for the opportune time to see if I can get them to waste it. Somebody say timing. timing. Let's speak around this thought. For this moment, for just a few moments, notice the timing. Notice the timing. Can I get us to say this confession? As loud as you can, everybody watching, I want you to put this in the room in all caps. Can I get us to say, Father, Father expose, expose, reveal, reveal and remove, and remove every, distraction every distraction that's after my time. After my time. I, refuse I refuse to waste my life. 
One more time. Father, expose, reveal, and remove every distraction. That's after my time. I refuse to waste my life. Does anybody believe that? All right, now while you clapping, when God reveals and when he exposes and he removes, don't be why. Because <laughs> they're after your time. And I love you so much that I will make sure that the person after your time won't steal your time. And oftentimes that comes in the form of a breakup. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, as we are now in the last month, the last series of the 2023 calendar year, this is it. Can y'all believe we in December? When I'm walking in the store and I'm hearing Christmas time is here, I'm like, really? <laughs> Josiah was just born, what, yesterday? As we are in this series, and I'm seeking God this week praying, engaged in sermon prep, because to the best of my capability, and of course to the empowering of the Holy Spirit, I always want to say what God wants me to say. I say, God, what's beating on your heart that you want me to share with your people? Why, have, why are we ending the year with the series on timing? And I really do believe that God has constructed this series for two reasons. Number one, he wants us to be aware that you are truly living in the end times. I need my people to have a spiritual awareness of the time you are living in. You are living in the end times. So you can't afford to waste time. You don't, you don't have enough time to do all the nothing that you want. <laughs> you don't have time to do all the nothing that you want. Spiritual laziness, that's over. Because the worst place that you can ever be in is the same place this year that you were last year. Spiritual laziness is over. I've been trying to get us to understand this. Listen, time is so critical that what you do in your lifetime will affect your afterlife placement. Therefore, forever is, compo is composed of many nows. Did y'all hear what I just said? Whatever you do, somebody say one more again. I like you. Time is so critical that what you do in your lifetime will affect your afterlife placement. Therefore, forever is composed of many nows. Surrendering to the gospel now. Accepting Christ now. Being obedient now. Or being disobedient now. So... A simple definition of hell can be this. Hell is truth seen too late. <laughs> simple definition of hell is truth seen too late. I'm like, why do we have pastors and ministers who are scared to mention, speak on, or touch hell when Jesus talked about it through his ministry tenure? He constantly was casting out devils, constantly casting out demons, and he talked about hell. It is a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. And if Jesus talked about it, and we're here to learn and talk about Jesus, why don't we talk about what Jesus talked about? It's truth seen too late. I need for my people to have a spiritual awareness that you are living in the end time. You don't know how much time you have. I understand that this message can be very sobering and a very riveting series. You don't know how much time you have. Why are you living like you do? You don't know if you have enough time to recover from that choice. You don't know. Help my people first obtain a spiritual awareness that they are living in the end times and then number two, I need for them to protect the most precious resource they have, their time. Protect your time. Protect your time. Protect your time. Listen, 
God has allowed for you to be the manager over the department of your time. So you hire and fire accordingly. God, he has allowed for you to be the manager over the department of your time. Hire and fire accordingly. Protect your time. Protect your time. You heard sermons about protect your heart. You've heard sermons about protect your peace. You've heard sermons about protect your spirit. Culture preaches protect your energy. Something just off. Protect your energy. Protect. Okay. Kingdom preaches protect your time. How long do you protect it, Pastor? Protect it to death. Protect your time. Bible all day. Let me give you these scriptures. Ephesians chapter 5. Verse 15 and 16, it says, look carefully, then how you walk. Somebody say careful. careful. Look carefully, then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise. Look at this, making the best use of the time. Why? Because the days are evil. Protect it. Make the best use. Don't waste it. See, if you waste your money, you're just out of money. If you waste time, you've lost a part of your life. Oh, if I can get us to see people like price tags. Is this a bill or an investment? If I can get us to see conversations like that. Is this conversation a bill or an investment? When it's an investment, it gives you a return in your assignment. When it's a bill, it charges you your time. If I can get us to have that awareness, every conversation, every text, every time you're scrolling on your phone, that's a bill or an investment. Are you scrolling reading or are you scrolling just to scroll? Sitting on the toilet so long till your knees feel like static. Just scrolling. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Somebody was like, oh, that was me. <laughs> Be getting up like, <laughs> scrolling. <laughs> Colossians chapter 4, verse 5, more Bible. Walk in wisdom toward outsiders, making the best use of the time. Protect your time. Notice the timing. Protect your time. Notice the timing. See, when you've learned how to protect your time, you no longer view toxicity as entertaining and peace as boring. <laughs> protect your time. When you have learned how to protect your time, you won't marry them in your head or pursue them without seeing fruit. <laughs> Do they have a grape of self-control? Do we have a plum of gentleness? Do we have a cantaloupe of just, just being self-controlled and patient and gentle? Do we have any fruit? <laughs> See, light travels faster than sound, right? This is why some people look bright until you hear them speak. <laughs> All you needed was one conversation. You're like, oh, Lord. Just one. You look so bright until you hear him talk. Just one conversation. They don't value integrity. They don't value godliness. They don't value pretty God. Thank you for exposing the fruit now. Because I don't want to waste my time anymore. Show me fruit on the first conversation. First one. Don't deceive me. Here it is. This might be too real. I'm tired of recognizing it was bad fruit after I bit. I don't want that. Help me have fruit inspection now. <laughs> Somebody say protect the time. I promise I'm not sorry. My generation requires real. You've learned how to protect your time when getting in the word for you is no longer seen as optional. It's seen as spiritual oxygen. It makes me come alive. You've learned to protect your time when the frequency of your no has increased. People who are good with protecting their time say no easy. Because time wasters look for time wasters to spend time with. <laughs> so good. Talk Holy Ghost. So my no is a lot, has more frequency, not because I'm mean, I'm purposeful. 
I'm full of purpose. So my no is considering my time needed for my purpose. You've learned to protect your time when you could discern who deserves a response versus who needs to be left on read. I've learned to protect my time. Remember, attention, attention and time are currency. Whatever you're focusing on, you're paying. Well, I don't know. Uh, is, is that biblical? I think you should respond to everybody. Let's look at the Bible and let's just see. <laughs> Matthew chapter 27, uh, verse 12. Let's just check out this. It says, when he, speaking of Jesus, when he was accused by the chief priest and the elders... He spoke back to them. Y'all ain't reading your Bible. When he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he spoke back to them. He gave no answer. This is Jesus. Then Pilate asked him, "Uh, don't you hear the testimony that they're bringing against you? But Jesus made no reply. Then it's even more intentional. Not even to a single charge. To the great amazement of the governor. See, some of us, you will look wise if you just know how to be quiet. Your folly is exposed by your tongue. But Jesus isn't responding. He's leaving him on read. (laughs) Now, the context to this, Jesus is like, okay, I came here to die. This is my time to die. What I look like wasting time trying to vindicate myself when I know it's my time to die. So you can talk all you want to. I'm here for this moment. I came here to be crucified. So why am I going to waste time responding to their accusations? What you going to do, do it quickly because I came here for this moment. Jesus is showing us a powerful principle. Knowing to hold your tongue is a form of time management. Talk Holy Spirit. Knowing when to hold your tongue is a form of time management. Protect your time. Protect. See, for certain people, you need to be like an outer service elevator. They could push all the buttons they want to, but I'm not going to the floor that you commanded. I'm out of service to your petty. I'm out of service to your disrespect. I'm out of service to your cussing people out. I'm out of service to what you think about me. What you think about me is none of my business. But I do know my business though. My business is to be kingdom. My business is to be an ambassador of the kingdom. My business is to be a light in dark places. My business is to preach the gospel. Sometimes the answer to your problem is knowing what's not your problem. What they think about me, that's not my problem. See, this is hard for all of my clapbackers in the room. I know. For all of those who are anointed to clap back. (laughs) I know that it can be difficult for you, especially when you feel like, I let that heifer slide last week. Last time she said something, I didn't say nothing because I didn't have time. Oh, but today I got time, cuz. Today I got time. What did you say? Run it back for me, please. What did you say? Say a little louder. (laughs) I know that this might be a little harder for you to not respond to the racial slur, to not respond to the comments. I'm not just telling you something I don't practice. I see the comments. I just don't respond to it. Because I understand that time is currency. And I don't have time to waste time trying to respond to somebody who doesn't know me. Okay. Um, I'm not asking you to be a doormat. I disagree, Pastor. Were you asking us to be a doormat? No. I'm asking for you to be Christ-like. You see that? (laughs) I'm asking for you to know when to give no reply. Because remember... After confirmation, there's always attempted confiscation. Okay. So I want us to really, really get this. This list, I just want to help you. I just want to help you be able to protect your time, especially around the holidays when it comes to dealing with people. Okay. Let me help you. Let me give you some points. Before you clap back, before you respond, consider this. Number one, 
does this person even know me? Not aware of me, but know me. Like I told us before, if they know me, they could call me. They don't have my number, they don't know me. <laughs> Everybody who knows me has access to me. So before you respond, do they know me? Okay. Number two, before you clap back to that, um, is this individual a necessary component to my spiritual evolution or my maturity in Christ? Meaning, do they help me grow? So if you come to small group and your small group leader says something to you that stings a little bit, but they help you grow and what they told you was the truth, but you just don't like it because the truth always offends those who love lies. So when they tell you a truth and you don't like it, it's not that church toxic. It's I don't like the truth. But they help me mature. Before I respond back, clap back, do they help me grow up? And number three, this is my favorite. Before you respond or clap back, consider this. Do they even have the mental maturity or emotional intelligence enough to have or converse with me from a different perspective outside of the one they have in their head or the one that they came up with due to somebody telling them something about me? If you could just consider those basic three things, it'll help you from not clapping back. Sometimes no response is your response. That's me. No, I'm protecting my time. I'm protecting my time. Protecting your time exposes your habits. Because habits produces habitation. Now, habitation means where something dwells. So put it together. Your habits are the place where your time dwells the most. Whew, so good. Protecting your time exposes your habits. Because habits produces habitation. Habitation, that's where something dwells. So your habits, that's where your time dwells the most. So... Time is stolen or time is invested by your habits. Show me your habits and you just show me if you're a time waster or a time investor. Because habits, that's where your time dwells. Have a Netflix habit, that's where your most time is. Have an Xbox habit, that's where most of your time is. Have an Amazon shopping habit, that's where most of your time is. Wherever your habit is, that's where your time is. Y'all should see the look on y'all faces. <laughs> Hear me, all of us, from the pulpit to all of the chairs and everybody watching online, we are all a compilation of our habits. All of us. We first make a choice with our time, then our choices make habits, and then our habits make us. One more time. We're all a compilation of our habits, everybody. We first make a choice with our time, then our choices make habits, and then our habits make us, okay? So you have to understand this. You are never going to rise at the level of your goals without addressing the level of your habits. Whatever goal you have, you're I want to read the whole Bible in 2024. And I, I have a whole sermon I'm going to deal with that. I'm like, how do we have all these Christians you've been saved for 20 years you never read the whole Bible at least once? That's why false prophets can have a congregation. Because, hold on a sermon, okay. Your, your, your habits are where your time is spent. And you can't reach the level of your goal without addressing the level of your habits. Change is the outcome of a hundred choices. Everyone count it. I'm teaching right now. Change is the outcome of your choices. Hundreds of choices you have to make if you want to change. Every single one counted. If we don't confront our habits, our time will. Protect your time. Protect your time. God wants to wake us up to maximizing our time. But unfortunately, many of our habits keep hitting snooze. Trying to wake you up, maximize your time. Your habit keeps on. 
That's your habit. That's your routine. And so I'm like, okay, Holy Spirit, help me. Give me. I really pray for illustrations. I do. I don't Google. I I pray. I say, God, how can they see this? Where it's forever embedded in their mind. Where the word could take root. The word must take root because seeds grow down before they grow up. So when the word is planted in your heart, God, give it depth. Don't let us be so caught up with platform. Anything that grows up quick doesn't have strong roots. Let this word take roots. And I believe God answered my request. I want us to see this chart and there's this illustration. I want us to see a few points so we can go home. Okay, this is how I believe it works. There's purpose. Okay. Before you, in your mother womb, before you were in your mother's womb, God knew you. So he has an assignment for you. Somebody say assignment. assignment. Okay, so I have a purpose. So I give you, I first form you, and then after I form you, I give you time. What is that? That's your birthday. I give you time. While you're in time, what's the next thing I do? I call you. That's getting saved, born again. Because I called you so that I could tell you what you're supposed to use your time for so that when you die, you could hear, well done. Is this making sense? Okay. There's this picture of my wife and I. I just want to kind of use a personal example of how this works. There's this picture of my wife and I. I screenshot it because I totally forgot about this. Last Sunday, once I left church, I was getting tagged. I look at one of the memories. This is November the 30th, 2019. Remember, I told you God told me, try me in 2019. So I posted right here, 32 days left. I was already thinking about time way back then. 32 days left, and this beautiful woman and I will be pastoring together every Thursday night in Houston, Texas, at Time of Celebration Ministries Church. Excited is an understatement. I had no idea in a few months a pandemic is going to happen. Trying to get you to see how your yes is time sensitive. I said no. What if I would have said no for a year? People were aware of the ministry March of 2020. I had no idea. When we started Thursday night, there were, what, 30 people here? And I was preaching just like this. Hard, sweating on my clothes. Nothing has changed. The only thing that's changing is I'm getting older. But my passion, my zeal for Jesus, none of that has changed. I had no idea your yes is time sensitive. Because what's about to come on the land is about to cause for people to be quarantined. And they're going to be looking for me. So I'm telling you to say yes. So when they look for me, they can hear me through you. It's not about you. You're just dirt. You don't get caught up in yourself. Arrogance is so stupid because we're all just a hunk of dust. And when we die, we're all going back to dust. Some of us are vanilla dust, white dust, Asian dust. You're still dust. That's it. But I just want you to just see just, just me, just my life, just using it as a testimony. If I would have waited, I don't think y'all would be here. Now, let's put the chart back on the screen. And whoever I asked, uh, Torrance and Terrence, I want y'all to come here. Put the chart back on the screen. First thing, there's purpose. Okay? So, um, I want Amber and Terrence, and y'all can come over here. Matter of fact, all of y'all, you can go down there. I'll come right here. I'm going to represent God. You too, Amber and uh, Terrence. I'm going to represent God. Space out. Just space out. Amber and Terrence, y'all stay over there. Camera people, I know I'm working you, but follow me. Okay. So y'all could just face that way. Because you're called to reach people. Now, I'm going to represent God. Okay. I created you. I formed you. And so now, Dre, it's your birthday. Here's some time. Okay, Terrence, Torrance, here's some time. All right, Chelsea, here's some time. So now they're in time, and I have given them time to fulfill a purpose that I've given them. But they don't know me yet. 
So what I do is I call them. Now, I'm going to call Dre, but Terrence, I want you to stop him, okay? So I know there's something that Dre has been born to do. So, Dre, come meet me over here. Now, don't wrestle him. Just stop him. Okay? You resist. You resist. Now, Terrence, take his clock. Take his clock. Take it. Take it. <laughs> now, look, y'all, y'all, y'all stay close like y'all are boys. Y'all boys. I'm calling Dre. There's a purpose I have for you. Dre, I have a mission for you to complete. Dre is calling Terrence his boy, but God calls it a time stealer. There's something I need for you to do. There's something I'm calling. So he's wasting all of his time with his boys. Okay? I gave him time. He don't know how much time he has, but he hasn't came to get his assignment yet. That's responding to the gospel because he's entertaining the wrong people. Now, I call Chelsea. Chelsea, I want you to come here. Amber, you try to stop her, but Chelsea, you just kind of move around. So I call Chelsea. There's a work. Chelsea been listening to the timing series. Come on up here. Chelsea, Amber, you done. You done. Chelsea been listening to the timing series. She's been taking notes. So now she could identify a time waster with ease because she's been given the wisdom. So now I have an assignment for you. I need you to be a worshiper in the earth. Not just a worshiper in your own personal time. I need that because that's for your growth. But you're going to be a worshiper for public assembly. You're going to lay the red carpet and bring people into my presence. And as I introduce her to her assignment, I begin to walk with her. And I begin to talk with her. Now, she stays here. She knows what she's supposed to do with her time, and she has her assignment. Now, Torrance, come here. I have an assignment for you. He don't have nobody distracting him but himself. Because life is filled with distractions. Don't you be your own distraction. Now, I want to show you what a lot of people do in 2023. I call you and I say, hey, this is your assignment. I need you to really, really help me to seek out those who don't get justice. I need you to be a lawyer. I need you in the marketplace. They're never going to come here, Jerry. They're never going to come here, these other preachers, but they're going to hear you. And I need you in your career to fight for justice. Now walk away. He started with me, but then he left me. He left me. You know why? Because he cared about his platform. So good. He cared about his platform. He cared about what he wanted to do. Now, this is what judgment will look like. All of y'all come here except Amber and uh, um, Terrence. Okay. Now, when we stand before God, what did you do with the time I gave you? What did you do with the time I gave you? What did you do with the time I gave you? One represents nothing. Whole life wasted time. Never got in this, never knew his assignment. Never knew what he was supposed to do. <laughs> See, Warren be acting like you if he was here. <laughs> never fulfilled his, all he did, girls, club, that's all he was worried about his whole life. So you never fulfilled your assignment. You, you were obedient for what I asked you to do. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You forgot your first love. I called you, but then you just walked away from me. You didn't study because you wanted revelation. You study because you want more of a following. Which one is you? This is so good, y'all can Which one is you? Which one? And I want that to be embedded in our brain. Our birthday is God giving us time. Salvation is God telling you, calling you for what you're supposed to do with your time. Obedience and surrendering to the gospel, trusting the power of the cross, being filled with the Holy Spirit, and living your life for Jesus. That's how you get well done. That's it. That's it. So, a few points and I'm done. How do I notice the timing and I don't waste my time? Number one. See God's direction before selection. 
That's point number one. How do I not waste my time? How do I notice the timing? I always seek God's direction before selection. Okay? The problem with many of us, myself included, is we often do second things first. You do it, then ask God. Seek God's direction before your selection. Number two, how do I not waste my time and notice the timing? Beware of your halt moments. What does halt mean? When you're hungry, when you're angry, when you're lonely, when you're tired. Notice what you do with that time. When you're hungry, where do you go? And I'm not talking about just food. When you're angry, where do you go? The best place for you to go is to the gym. Nobody said amen, Lord. <laughs> best place when you're angry. Because when you're angry, you could do something with your time. I think that's what makes prison so bad. It takes your time. And you can never get it back. You could do something when you're angry that can cause for you to murder, kill. Now you're in prison, and now you're wasting all of this time because you didn't know how to handle the moment of anger. Lonely. What do you do when you're lonely? That's huge. Because the enemy waits for an opportune time when you're tired. This is just me. I'm more goofy when I'm tired. Anybody else like that? Yeah. Uh, and I, I got this revelation in college. Man, maybe that's why I parties at night. Because you, you already goofy. Then you're going to be drunk. And then music vibrations are throwing off your equilibrium. You're going to make all types of wild decisions. But the enemy waits for an opportune time. Number three, how do I not waste my time? And notice the timing. Not yet doesn't mean no. Okay? Not yet doesn't mean no. Don't create an Ishmael because God has taken too long with Isaac. Okay? Not yet doesn't mean no. There's this loading symbol. Okay? This loading symbol that I know I hate when I see this. I don't know if y'all ever seen this. I hate this symbol, but really it means three things. Number one, something is coming. That's a whole word. I could do a sermon on that. Something is coming. It means something is coming. Number two, you have too many tabs open. If I didn't need my water, I'd throw it. <laughs> you got too many doors open. You're stuck on loading because the enemy has too much access. That's what this loading symbol means. And number three, anytime you get this loading symbol, it means your connection is bad. You don't have enough power, not because I'm not giving you the power, but you haven't connected to a strong... <laughs> then the last point, and we can go home. And this is something that really has been blessing me lately, especially as we're praying and asking God for a larger facility. Number four, it's already done. It's already done. Every appointed time, it's already done. You just haven't got there yet, but it's already done. I'm going to prove this in the Bible. John 21, verse 4. Look at this. Early in the morning, this is after Jesus resurrected from the grave. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. I'm like, Jesus, you're funny. You're God. You know they don't have no fish. <laughs> Verse 6, he said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. Then I was like, oh, I get it. I get why Jesus said, hey, y'all got any fish? No. He's like, okay, I already called y'all to be fishers of men. Why are you going back to fishing for fish? That old stuff, it don't work anymore, huh? The weed, it don't hit anymore, huh? <laughs> yeah, the cheap sex, it don't hit like it used to, huh? It don't hit. Follow my instruction, and then you're going to catch what you want to catch. 
And once they caught it, they said, oh, this is the Lord. <laughs> as soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it's the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. Watch this, y'all. When they landed, they saw a fire, they saw a fire of burning coals. There was fish on it and some bread. Okay, hold up. Hey, y'all got any fish? No. Go on the right side, y'all gonna catch some. They come to the Lord, fire is burning. So technically, it was already done. <laughs> I'm already cooking while you're out here trying. It's already done. The building, we're going to get it. It's already done. We just have to come to the shore, be obedient, trust this timing. It's already done. It's already done. And that encouraged my heart because it lets me know when I follow the instructions for them, it's thrown the, on the right side. When I follow the instructions of God and I come to him, he's going to show me I've already prepared a place for you. It's already done. What are you having so much anxiety about that God is saying it's already done? God, why did you make them fish? You maximize your time, but what I have for you to eat, it's already done. Fire, it's hot. It's not cold. I've been waiting for you. I've been waiting for you. This word, God is saying, I've been waiting for you. The peace, it's already done. Just come here. The hope, it's already done. Just come here. It doesn't work anymore, does it? Come over here. I got you. It's already done. So God, in this moment, thank you for being the God of already. Already have the peace, already have the joy. All of that could be found in you. Heighten our spiritual awareness, O oh Lord. Holy Spirit, guide us. Be that wonderful counselor so that we don't waste our time. And also, most importantly, Open our eyes so that we can identify time wasters clearly so that we don't understand that we're being distracted until after we have been distracted. Give us the wisdom so that we can maximize our time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Are you blessed on today?